What is pomegranate molasses, where do you use it, and how do you make it? If you're new here, I'm Obi. I desperately need a haircut, and I want to get you cooking amazing Middle Eastern food at home. In this episode of the Middle Eastern Pantry, I'll be teaching you all about pomegranate molasses, one of the greatest ingredients in the Middle Eastern cuisines. I'll tell you why it's a great ingredient, how to use it in your everyday cooking, and how to make your own at home. So let's get right to it. So what is pomegranate molasses or Dibs Roman? Well, in the Middle East, we make a lot of different products that we call molasses. These are syrups that are made by boiling down fruit juices to a thick consistency. This allows us to preserve our fruit produce beyond the harvest season. What makes molasses different from jams is that they are made from strained juice rather than whole fruit. The result is a super smooth texture and a great pourable consistency. Pomegranate molasses is just that, a thick concentrated pomegranate juice. It's famous for its sweet and sour flavour profile, which is used to add a bright tangy flavour to a lot of dishes. You'll most commonly see this in Levantine cuisines. You can think of this as the Middle Eastern equivalent to traditional balsamic vinegar, and it's used in pretty much the same way. Any food that tastes good with balsamic will probably taste good with pomegranate molasses too. Personally, I love tangy foods, and pomegranate molasses is one of my favourite ingredients. Using it will make any food tangang approved. When it comes to buying pomegranate molasses, they tend to vary a lot in taste. Some brands will make theirs using 100% pomegranate juice and end up with a less sweet flavour. Others add in sugar or lemon and this can help to round out the sweetness and acidity of the molasses. This one I got from the store is only 17% pomegranate juice, and frankly after making my own I will never buy pomegranate molasses again. Personally, I like a molasses that is tart and tangy, but not sour enough to make me screw up my face. It should also be pleasantly sweet, without leaving a sugary aftertaste. So if you can't get pomegranate molasses, then you'll need pomegranate juice to make it, and lots of it. To make 500 milliliters of pomegranate molasses, you'll need about 2 to 2.5 liters of juice. The best pomegranate juice obviously comes from freshly squeezed pomegranates, though if they aren't available or in season, then you can use store-bought juice instead. Just make sure that it is 100% pomegranate and there are no preservatives or additives in it. In a test batch of molasses I made with freshly squeezed juice, it ended up with a vibrant purple colour and it didn't need much additional sugar. When comparing it to one made with store-bought juice, the flavours were much more intense and fresh tasting. I've seen pomegranates juiced using a lever style citrus juicer, so I tried it using my electric citrus juicer and it wasn't very effective. It left a lot of seeds unjuiced, but that's probably because it didn't compress the fruit enough. So to juice your own pomegranates, you'll have to get the seeds out. The easy way to do this is to score the skin of your pomegranate all the way around the centre, and then pry the two halves apart. Grab one half and then pull two opposing sides of the pomegranate away from each other. That will loosen the seeds from the white pith. Rotate and repeat till you've done the whole thing. Now turn the pomegranate over and hold it over your fingers, then beat the crap out of it with something heavy. I'm using my honing rod and you can use any metal spoon or ladle. Hit the skin of the pomegranate and that force will knock the seeds out of the shell. Once the section has been emptied, rotate the shell and do the next part, and repeat until you've done the whole thing. All you have to do now is pick out any pieces of the white pith, and you can simply do this by adding water to your pomegranate seeds and all the pith will float to the surface making it really easy to skim off. I found this to be a very effective method at getting the seeds, but a little messy. Pomegranate juice is extremely red and will stain clothes and your worktop easily, so you really need to clean up very quickly if you get any splatters. It takes me about 2 minutes to completely de-seed a pomegranate, and from these large 500g pomegranates, you can expect to get about 350 grams of fruit. Coincidentally, 350 grams of fruit will net you about 200 milliliters of juice, so you'll need to do about 10 to 12 large pomegranates for 500 milliliters of molasses. Once you've got all your fruit, you can either put it in a juicer or in a food processor or blender, and let the machine run till it's looking like juice. Now you'll strain out the seeds and pulp. Remember how I said this stuff can stain easily? Well I'd recommend not using a sieve, as if it breaks or slips then you'll end up rushing to clean all the spilt juice up. Instead I ended up using a cheesecloth, which filtered out all the seeds and pulp, and I was left with 100% pure pomegranate juice. You can see just how bright this is compared to the store-bought stuff. It tastes twice as sweet, and it doesn't have a bitter aftertaste like the store-bought one does. 
Between spilling some juice and then later injuring my leg, I ended up having to use the store-bought juice for the molasses, but I highly recommend you use your own freshly squeezed pomegranate juice. Turning the juice into molasses is really simple. You'll add your juice to a large pot over a medium-low heat. Then for each litre of juice, you'll add in 45 millilitres of lemon juice and 50 grams of sugar. If the juice you are using is already quite sweet, then you can halve the sugar. I'm working with 3 litres here, so I've tripled these amounts. Now you'll just let this simmer and reduce over a medium low heat for a few hours, and don't allow it to come to a full boil. If you get a bunch of floating scum, feel free to remove it. Then once it has reduced to about a quarter of its volume, check it with a spoon. It should coat the spoon easily, and if you blow on it to cool it down, it should develop a syrupy texture. When you've checked the texture, go ahead and pour the syrup out into a jug or bowl and allow it to cool down slightly. Once it reaches room temperature, it will thicken to the molasses-like texture. After about 20 minutes, it will have cooled a little. You can pour this into a bottle and then allow it to cool completely and thicken. Because of the lemon and sugar, this should keep well in the fridge for at least 6 months, and if you live in a colder climate, then it may even be fine in your cupboard. In terms of using pomegranate molasses, it can be used in any application that will benefit from a sweet and sour flavour contrast, or used directly in place of balsamic. Some of the common uses in Middle Eastern cuisines are adding it to dolma for a tangy flavour, putting it in fatouche for the bright sourness, or adding it to mahamara and kisir for the strong pomegranate flavour. I've done all of these on the channel previously, so be sure to check them out. You can also use pomegranate molasses in your everyday cooking. I put together this mixed leaf and burrata salad, then drizzled over some pomegranate molasses rather than balsamic for a slightly different take on a burrata salad. For chicken wings, I make a glaze with 4 tablespoons of pomegranate molasses, 1 tablespoon of lemon juice and a quarter teaspoon each of salt, pepper and chilli flakes. It gets mixed together and brushed onto the wings giving them a great sweet and tangy flavour, which is my favourite way of making wings. In terms of sweet applications, you can use it like a berry coolie. I placed it on some ice cream with a few pomegranate seeds for a refreshing pomegranate flavour, and you'd be surprised by how damn good this was. You can also make a refreshing pomegranate drink by just combining 2 tablespoons of pomegranate molasses and 200 milliliters of sparkling water or soda over ice. So if you're looking to add a sweet and sour tangy flavour to your dishes, you should try using some pomegranate molasses. Let me know if you make it and tell me what great uses for it you discover. If you want to see a specific ingredient on the Middle Eastern pantry in the future, then drop me a comment and don't forget to like this video. Thanks to our Patreon sponsors for making this video possible, and I'll see you soon in the next recipe.